Welcome to this From Here to BTDD channel. BTDT stands for Been There, Done That. That's what you need to be able to say when you look at a problem, any problem, and while you're taking an actuarial exam. Been there, done that. You must have done so many problems that you're familiar with every single concept and you know how to do every problem you look at. You can find information about me and other information about my seminars and textbooks um, through these sites I'm giving you here. I use a uh, redirect service, uh, smarturl.it, and you can find, for example, uh, me on uh, smarturl.it forward slash Jedi, and the actuarial program at Illinois nice State University as uh, smarturl.it forward slash actuary. Okay, so here's a nice problem. For exam MFE, which is uh, the study note MFE-03-17, problem number 7. Um, These are uh, advanced derivatives notes, and the problem is about um, a put option, as it turns out, and using the Black-Scholes formula. So look at this. We have a company A that is a U.S. international company, and company B is a Japanese local company. Company A is negotiating with company B to sell its operation in Tokyo to company B. The deal will be settled in Japanese yen. To avoid a loss at the time when the deal is closed due to a sudden devaluation of yen relative to dollar, company A has decided to buy at the money dollar denominated yen put of the European type to hedge the risk. Remember, at the money option means option uh, for which the exercise price is the current price of the underlying. You were given the following information. The deal will be closed three months from now. The sale price of the Tokyo operation has been settled as at 120 billion Japanese yen. The continuously compounded risk-free interest rate in the U.S. is 3.5%. So this is really force of interest, but anyway. Um, the continuously compounded risk-free interest rate in Japan is 1.5%. The current exchange rate is 1 US dollar per 120 Japanese yen. The daily volatility of the yen per dollar exchange rate is 0.261712%. One year has 365 days. You may wonder why you're supposed to know that doesn't everybody know that no uh, there is a reason for that this is the number you're going to use to translate the daily volatility to annual volatility and we don't always use 365 days for example john hall's book uses all, only trading days when the markets are open that's about 252 per year and three months is a quarter of a year Calculate company A's option cost. Okay, so the, the key piece of information here, or well, the key insight is uh, that um, when you're working with a foreign currency, you treat such a foreign currency just like a stock when you're working with options and currencies, uh, but for, or for other purposes of modeling derivatives. And the risk-free interest rate on that currency is treated as dividend yield on the stock, on that artificial stock. You imagine that the foreign currency is a stock and the interest rate on that currency is a dividend yield on that imaginary stock. Let us write X of T for the dollar-denominated exchange rate for one Japanese yen. And the symbol for yen is that Y with, a, with two lines crossing it. So that at time t, 1 yen is x of t dollars. We are given that x of 0 is 1 over 120. Right? 1 yen is 1 over 120 dollars, so a very small number. At time 1, 4 in years, company A will receive 120 billion yen, which it can then exchange into dollars, receiving 120 billion times x of 1, 4 dollars. Um, but the company A wants to buy Euro, uh, European at the money dollar denominated yen puts. Um, so it effectively wants to be able to sell at time one fourth the 120 billion yen for what price? Well, the exercise price of the option 
but the options at the money. So the current price, 1 over 120 um, yen um, um, per dollar. Um, so, of course, I'm saying here, wants to be able to sell, not wants to sell, to be able to indicates an option and not a forward contract. You could have done the same thing by selling that money on the forward, but that's not what the question is. The question is they want to protect themselves by having a put option. And the payoff of such uh, and at the money put at time one fourth is the maximum of 1 over 120, the exercise price of the put, minus then current price, x of 1 fourth, or 0, because if the put is worthless, it won't be exercised, so that's why there's 0 there. So as mentioned at the beginning of the solution, we treat the foreign currency as a stock, and we calculate the price of a put on that stock with the use of the Black-Scholes formula. The option is European, so we can use the Black-Scholes formula. Um, for a put with the following parameters. The continuous compounded risk-free interest rate is R equal to 0 0.035. The current price of a share of the stock is 1 over 120. The excess price, exercise price is the same. 1 over 120. The d continuously compounded dividend yield on this stock, or really Japanese yen, is 0 0.015. Uh, and the time until option expiration is one fourth of a year, and daily volatility is given, but in the Black Scholes formula, we use a year typically as a unit. All the interest rates are annual, so we need to have this expressed as an annual volatility, and um, we assume that daily uh, returns, continuous compounded returns, are independent, so that the variance of the annual um, continuous compounded rate of return is the sum of daily variances. So the annual variances, assuming daily uh, variances follow the same probability distribution are independent. The annual variance is 365 times the daily variance, so that the annual standard deviation is square root of 365 times daily standard deviation. Uh, daily, yes, daily standard deviation. Uh, so that's what we do. We can multiply this daily volatility or daily standard deviation of the continuously compounded rate of return on a Japanese yen where the rate of return is calculated in US dollars, uh, we multiply that by square root of 365, and the problem is conveniently arranged so that this comes out to be 5% or uh, point of 5. And then we write out the Black-Scholes formula for a value of a European put, and that's n of minus d2, k, k e to the minus rt, minus n of minus d1 times s e to the minus delta t, where all the parameters were listed before, but we need to find d1 and d2. Notice that this is just probability weighted difference between the two things, right? And the first thing is present value of exercise price, and the second thing is current value um, without uh, the dividend, um, so prepaid forward, price of the stock, well, what is the payoff of the put option if it's exercised? It's k minus s. So these two are kind of like present value of these two, of k minus s, except they're modified by the probabilities, n of minus d2 and n of minus d1. And d1 is r minus delta times t plus one half sigma squared t over sigma square root of t, and d2 is the same thing, but with a minus sign. Okay, so we plug in all the numbers and we find d1 and d2, and then we just need to plug in everything and, and get the answer. This is actually very straightforward once you identify all parameters. So we plug in all the numbers and we get something, but notice this. This is actually the price per one unit. So... Um, for selling one yen, right? A put option on one yen. 
it's going to come out to be a very, very small number because it's dollar denominated. So small. Um, my calculator doesn't want to show it. Excel doesn't want to show it as a normal number. But that's okay because we asked the price for to find the price for an option to sell 120 billion yen. So we need to multiply this answer by 120 billion yen. When you do that, it comes out to be about 7,624,318.10. That's a um, dollar price for an option to sell 120 billion yen. Okay? And I know it sounds expensive, but um, 120 billion yen, um, even at current exchange rate, that's a million dollars. I'm sorry, a hundred million dollars. Um, oh, I'm sorry, it's it's not even that. It's a billion dollars. I can't count. I'm sorry. So it's a billion dollars, and the uh, option price is seven million. So it's a fraction of a percent. Um, so the answer is quite reasonable. Please remember that these are copyrighted materials and all the problems from the Society of Actuaries Examinations belong to the Society are used here with permission. Good luck in your studies and on exam MFE. A wonderful exam on financial mathematics used in stochastic models. Uh, uh, not an easy exam, but there is no such thing as easy actuarial exams.